didn't have a good day at all today, Jim. Not a good day at all. Woke up this morning, put my shirt on, button fell off. Put on a tie, tie clip fell off. Picked up my briefcase, handle fell off. I'm afraid to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Then they go for my walk. So I'm walking down the sidewalk. And I look at a guy, and the guy ahead of me, he's coming at me, he's walking like this. We keep walking back and forth each other, we finally catch up. He looks at me, he says, Vietnam, 1968, Phnom Penh. How about you? Me? Dog food, quarter of a second of change. <laughs> Not a good day. Not a good day. You know, if you look at me, you wouldn't think this, but I was an ugly kid. No, I, got, I really was not a good-looking kid. What was that? How ugly were you? Hey, I got a straight guy in the audience. What do you know? <laughs> I tell you what, I was so ugly. When I was born, the doctor slapped my mother. <laughs> I was, I was so ugly. My, my, uh, I don't have a screen like you guys. I got, I got to remember. <laughs> I was so ugly, my dad carried the picture of the kid that came with the wallet. <laughs> yeah. I was so ugly, my parents put pork chops around my neck so the dog would play with oh. Ugly kid, ugly kid. But the neighborhood was even worse. It was a rough, rough neighborhood, I tell you. One day my friends come by and say, Rodney, you want to go hunting? I said, sure, I'm game. So they shot me. Oh. Not, a good, not a good neighborhood, and the school was worse. Tough, tough school. One day in English class, the teacher says, what comes after a sentence? Kid in the back says, an appeal. <laughs> an appeal. I think they got it. <laughs> I'm not sure. I thought you said this crowd was going to be electric. Uh, they didn't know you meant they were all plugged into oxygen. <laughs> but that school was tough. It was tough. I tell you what, but that's where I met my wife. She was real popular, if you know what I mean. Uh, Everybody knew my wife, yeah. Senior class voted her most likely to conceive. <laughs> hey, listen, I gotta go. Maybe I'll see you later. Okay, I'm gonna let you go relax. <laughs> you know, I gotta tell you something, Jim. You probably yeah. shouldn't have had spaghetti before the show. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and your flies open too, but okay. <laughs> so I was talking about my wife, you know, lovely lady. Lovely, lovely lady. Just love her to death. But she's not a good cook. She is not a good cook at all. I tell you. In our house, we pray after we eat. Not a good cook. Not a good cook. I came home the other night and all the roaches hung themselves. Not a good cook at all. And she's not a little woman. She's not a little woman. She's a big woman. She's a big woman. Where's my straight man? How big is she? I tell you what, she's so big she got on a coin operated weight machine and the ticket come out and said, two to one at a time, please. <laughs> poor lady, poor lady. The other day she was crossing the street and a truck ran over. I said, driver, why did you run over my wife? He said, I didn't have enough gas to go around. Oh, wow, that's nasty. Not a small woman, not a small woman. Not a small woman. Poor lady, poor lady. So anyway, I took her to the psychiatrist. I thought that might help. So she goes to the psychiatrist, the doc says, you have to learn to embrace your mistakes. You have to learn to embrace your mistakes. So she comes home and gives me a hug. <laughs> not a good time, not a good time. Hey, I gotta go. Okay, all right, well, have a nice trip. Something, but didn't you want to get something off your chest if oh, you ever yeah. missed a flight? Of I really like you, Jim, if you got me. And I gotta say, these doctors these days, they just, I don't know about them. I take my wife to the doctor. She goes, doc, he goes, every time I go to the washroom, dimes come out. He says, take a pill, come back in a week. She comes back in a week, she says, Doc, every time I go to the washroom, quarters come out. He said, take this pill, come back in a week. She comes back in a week, the Doc, every time I go to the washroom, nickels come out. He says, don't worry about it, you're just going through the change. <laughs> so I go to the Doc. Little Asian guy. I walk in, he says, Mr. Rodney, he said, you're too fat. I said, well, I like a second opinion. He says, you're ugly, too. <laughs> Dr. Day. So then I go to the dentist. Yeah, I think his name was McGroin. Yeah, Pat McGroin. Pat McGroin, that was it. I go to the dentist. I said, Doc, my teeth are starting to yell a little bit. What do I do? He says, wear a brown tie. <laughs> a lot of help, huh? A lot of help. 
So for those reasons, I spend all the time in the bar. Yeah. And I go to a bar where actually it's a, it's a good deal because there's $2 off of drinks. So the more you drink, the more you save. <laughs> so I'm sitting there the other day and a horse walks in. I said, hey, pal, why the long face? Why long face? I said, hey, why the long face? Why the long face? I like a crowd again. So I'm sitting there and father and son come in and sit down beside me and I couldn't help but overhear the conversation. He just come back from chemo treatment. And he said, son, he says, we got a few family matters to talk about. He says, uh, have a drink. And he says, excuse me, just a second. He stands up, he looks over the bar. He says, all my friends in the bar here tonight, he said, I've contracted the AIDS virus. My days are numbered. The drinks are on me. Sits back down and son says, dad, you got cancer. You told everybody in here you got AIDS. He said, yes, yeah, son, I just want to make sure nobody sleeps with their mother after I'm gone. <laughs> sitting there having a drink. A nice looking couple comes in, sits down beside me. I reach for my drink and <laughs> break wind a little bit. You've done that when you're sitting there alone. Anyway, this guy jumps around, comes back and says, how dare you fart in front of my wife? I said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was her turn. <laughs> hey, I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs>